Did the Nile River turn red in the Bible because of an algae bloom of red tide? Exodus 7 verse 17. This is what the Lord says. By this, you will know that I am the Lord, with the staff that is in my hands I will strike the water of the Nile, and it will be changed into blood. The fish in the Nile will die, and the river will stink and the Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. Some biblical scholars believe the seventh chapter of Exodus mentions red tide, when the river Nile turns to a river of blood, where many fish were killed, and the people could not drink the water. Red tide is a colloquial term used to refer to one of a variety of natural phenomena known as harmful algal blooms, which are caused by certain species of phytoplankton containing photosynthetic pigments that vary in color from green to brown to red. Blooms can last from a few days to many months. After the bloom dies, the microbes that decompose the dead algae use up more of the oxygen, generating a dead zone which can cause fish die-offs. When these zones of depleted oxygen cover a large area for an extended period of time, neither fish nor plants are able to survive. Three major algae groups were found to dominate the River Nile, green algae, blue-green algae, and diatoms. The scientific names of the three algae are Chlorophyta, the green algae, Cyanophyta, the blue-green algae, and Bacillariophyta which are the diatoms found in the Nile. Diatoms represent the most dominant group and comprised from 42% to 96% of the phytoplankton community during the investigated period of the reference study. The diatoms of Bacillariophyta are the most species-rich group of autotrophic algae found in fresh, brackish, and marine waters worldwide, and also in damp terrestrial habitats. These diatoms contain carotenoids which are yellow, orange, and red organic pigments, which give the characteristic colors to pumpkins, carrots, flamingos, salmon, lobster, and shrimp. These algae can bloom to large amounts, and can create a chain reaction of environmental destruction. The harmful algae bloom produces dead zones which kill the fish, which then leads to flies and diseases. This is what some biblical scholars believe this is how the Exodus plagues unfolded. Another interesting biblical theory involving algae, is the miracle of the biblical manna. When the Israelites were in the desert, every morning a dew of manna would appear for them to eat for nutrients. Quoting from the Bible, The Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, let your people go forth and gather what is sufficient for the day. In the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp, and when the dew was gone, thin flakes, like unto frost on the ground, appeared upon the desert floor. Unquote. Botanists, Harold, and Alma Moldink, wrote that the manna that the Israelites ate, may have been a type of algal growth, of the genus Nostoc. The growth patterns of this algae, mirror the cycle of growing in the night, when dew coated the ground, but withering away and stinking when daylight came. They also suspected that manna was a group of Lycanora lichens. These lichens are symbiotic organisms made of algae and fungi, that curled up, broke loose from the ground, and were carried great distances. The Moldings also noted that Middle Eastern nomadic tribesmen have made bread from these lichens. The flake-like manna in Exodus, likely refers to the Lycanora lichens, while the manna in Numbers, likely refers to one of many Nostoc species. Whatever manna's true identity was, it was not likely to be a literal bread. Whether it was truly of divine origin or of natural origin, it was a gift all the same, and would be a welcome finding to anyone who was stuck in the desert for 40 years. In modern times we have easier access to the nutritional gifts of algae, and we don't have to wander in the desert for 40 years.